I'm learning that grief needs a container. It needs a place to flow. And so that's what this record was for me. It was a place to put my memory, to put my, my sadness and my joy. This is all music that I have a history with, that Phil had a history with, that speaks to my heart in this moment. Maybe some of these songs meant one thing years ago, like, um, like the tune Moon River. It was always just such a gorgeous song. But now when I think about wider than a mile, I'm crossing you in style someday, that lyric rings in a totally different way for me now than it did when I first encountered the song. You know, it, it, it started as a, a way for me to express. As I got into it, I realized that this isn't just about me, that this is a universal moment that we find ourselves in where there's all kinds of levels of grief. Some people have lost someone close to them, but everybody has lost something. And so I hope it's a place where people can feel a sense of community and hopefully it's a place where we, we can agree um, that we have some commonality. You got a podcast coming up. Too. I have a podcast. <laughs> you see, it's dangerous when you give a girl some time. <laughs> if it had not been for this pandemic, there would probably be no record and there would most likely not be a podcast. Having this quiet, this time where I'm not traveling and I'm not running around the world um, on stage and sort of running from uh, parts of my life, running from loneliness, running from a house that's empty. I've been writing. I've been journaling all along, but I started having so much that was in me that I was speaking it into my voice memo, into my phone. And um, I shared it with uh, some friends and one, one friend of mine said, girl, that's a podcast. I was like, really? It sounds kind of personal to me. But, you know, what I realized is that, that grief is kind of taboo. You know, people give you a moment to grieve and then it's like you're supposed to be over it, but there is no time limit. Grief has its own way with you. And the podcast storytelling format is perfect for uh, for, what I'm, for what I'm wanting to do, which is create a community where we can share stories and feel no judgment about what we feel, feel what we feel. It's called Great Grief. It's in collaboration with WUNC Radio, my great friends. And um, we're just gonna share stories and, and music. I think when we feel seen, when we feel that our story our particular reality is shared, I think there's healing in that. Well, I can say I felt like Phil was with me in the recording studio. People are all over the place in terms of where the spirit goes when it departs from the body. Well, my husband's spirit was very close indeed to me. Um, we were married 40 years, and that thing doesn't just turn off like that. So um, I really feel like he was with me. He was right, and I know he's, I just feel like he's proud of this project. Because one of the things he really felt sad about was that his illness and his death might mean I would stop living. And he told me time and time again, keep singing. Keep doing what you do, only you can do it keep doing it, don't let this stop you. So even when it feels hard, even when it feels difficult, I always get something that I didn't expect from the experience because um, I know it isn't all about me. Somebody looks at you the way you experience your grief and they're inspired, not because of anything you said, but because of the way you're living you're pressing on. Not being strong, necessarily. Being vulnerable. Voice breaking up a little bit, tear coming out the eye, yeah, but still there. 
that's more important than anything you could say. 